What up, what up, everybody? Happy Friday. Welcome, welcome. You are tuned in to the Entrepreneurial Web. I'm your host, Jeremiah Fox. Got an exciting show for you today. They're always exciting, but this one, I, I'm not for nothing. I'm a little nervous. <laughs> so my guest, I just met the other night. Uh, he came into my restaurant with my friend, neighbor, uh, and show alum, Andrew Berenbaum, who is also the CEO of First Two Media. Before I bring my guest on, we give you the message of the week. And this comes from one of his websites. Uh, he is the, he's a co-founder in Neurogum and also Oki's World. And I saw this in, in a number of places on the Neurogum website. Um, my guest today also uh, trained with the Japanese Olympic judo team, Hora. The guy was no t some takedowns. He was no some stuff. He might even have a little Brazilian accent too um, and trained in Muay Thai. So it really got me excited. Um, and this is a message that, that really uh, landed on my radar in martial arts training, uh, particularly jujitsu and Muay Thai. Um, and it is the best version of ourselves starts with the mind. With that, I am very honored to welcome Kent uh, Yoshimura to the show. Welcome. Uh, make sure you are unmuted before you go. And all right. What's up? What is that? <laughs> What's going on, man? Good to see I, you I again. I love that we are uh, hanging out already so soon. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's fantastic. It's serendipity, you know. Are you you back in L.A. or are you still in New York? Uh, yep, I'm back in L.A. I mean, New York was just yeah. like a three-day trip to meet up with my creative director, uh, meet up with Andrew. And yeah. I, yeah, I don't know if, you know, I'm such an L.A. guy. <laughs> that I don't know if I could survive in New York outside of short periods at a time. And I used to spend more yeah. time, but it's like that intensity is, uh, it wears on you. Yeah, I, I don't know, for me, it's like, I've lived in New York almost 20 years. And I, if I'm not here, I wanna be in the complete country, like completely removed from everything. There's, there's not much in between for me, but uh, yeah, if you love it, you love it. If you don't, I understand. I love it, I love New York. And, and <laughs> I think uh, like, if, if I were to live there, it would be where you are, for sure. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Instead of in right. the middle of Midtown. Yeah. I'm, I'm back, I'm back in, in my restaurant. That's where we met, my restaurant, Della, in Brooklyn, in Windsor Terrace, where Andrew and I live. And yeah, it's idyllic. It's a, it's a wonderful it's little the, spot. It's like the most, I'm like, oh, okay, like, I get it now. <laughs> like, this is, like, perfect. Yeah, no, and that, for me, it was a product of my wife's, you know, rec uh, her her adamant, like, desire to live in a place like this when we moved to New York from, we were in upstate, she went to school in Rochester, and I went to school in Buffalo, um, for music, uh, which we can, we can, we, there's a lot to talk about, there's a lot to talk yeah, about, here. this hour cool. is going to go by so fast, but yeah, I studied music, uh, and I did my, I did my grad degree at University of Buffalo, we came straight from there to here, and she was like, I am not living in East Village or one of these like crazy neighborhoods. She wanted, you know, this simplicity. And so I was like, all right. And one of my, uh, a guy I went to school with, he was a bass player. He went transferred to the bass collective. So he was here already. And he, he had an apartment in this neighborhood and we had some shows together and we came and stayed with him. And, uh, and she was like, this is it. This, I, we will live nowhere else. And I was like, all right, fine made it easy um and then like so many great things came out of that you know just like if i wasn't in this neighborhood i don't know that i would have pulled off a lot of the stuff that i did so, yeah it yeah because you you very... get to be close to the madness but separated yeah. from it as well yes which is like yes, martial exactly. arts. <laughs> <laughs> controlling chaos turning order and making okay. uh order out of chaos so um neurogum you're a co-founder in that um really great website and i love that uh, it really emphasizes improving yourself. Your, 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 your product is, is not just about your product. It's about making oneself better. Um, mm -hmm. and, and what a commitment, what a, you know, just a statement. Where, where did that come from? Yeah. So when I was training uh, pretty heavily, and I've been training since I was like five years old and uh, a combination of karate, judo, Muay Thai, I later got into jujitsu. Um, oh, interesting! Ryan's popping in as well. Um, who's who's Ryan? Who's who's this unexpected guest? Uh, Ryan's my co-founder in Neuro, <laughs> but uh, I guess he saw it on my calendar and ho hopped in. And he's like, he's like, here we go. <laughs> Is he going to embarrass you? <laughs> no, no, no. no. He'll enhance. He'll enhance the show. Um, nice. But 
during all this training, it was, a uh, it became like, okay, how do I, uh, supplement, um, my training with something that's a lot cleaner than energy drinks or mm -hmm. any of the things that were out there that people were taking to basically optimize themselves. And, um, <laughs> weird, weird to use the word optimization because it was, it was never that with the supplements that were out there during that time. So I went down this like research rabbit hole in the world of nootropics and eventually mm -hmm. uh, v mixed V0 of what became neuro gum and neuro mints. Um, and it, it, in that journey, taking the, like the supplements that uh, I was just mixing in my bedroom, um, we realized like, okay, um, <laughs> sharing like mixed supplements and pills in public is not the most approachable way to convince someone to be like, Hey, this is actually going to be good for you. So yeah. <laughs> we, Ryan and I took a step back, drank a scuba diving trip. And was like, Hey, we need to make this more approachable and gum and mints because of how intrinsically shareable they are became the obvious choice. And we went through an R and D process, um, took all the mantras of what we believed in, which is it all starts with the mind. How do we push ourselves further and, uh, built this company. Very cool. And what year did you guys kind of kick that off? Uh, 2015. So it's, it's been a while. <laughs> yeah. You're not a baby anymore. Um, you know, one of my fascinations lately, um, I've got a, a friend who's also been on the show a number of times and he created this, um, it's like a Facebook group called four percenters. And the idea is that only 4% of businesses make it beyond 10 years. So it's like this, it's, it's almost like black belt, right? You know, like why, why would you get a black belt? Why did they create it? You know, it's, it's, it's this incentive for you to keep going. It's this, this thing you're trying to achieve. Um, and, and that's been kind of my goalpost lately because for restaurants, it's like the, you know, the stats are most of them don't make it to five years. So we got to five years. We opened in 2015 as well. This is why I'm saying this. So I'm kind of, we're, we're neck and neck in terms of uh, our, our business life cycle. Um, so I got to five years and it was like right in the middle of the pandemic. And I was like, well, cool. Um, <laughs> you know, <laughs> yes. this is not this what is I thought of. Like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. no, I was like, okay, <laughs> now I get it. Now I understand. Um, and, and so I really was just like, okay, let's, let's like dig into this, um, and, and try to be like, I want to be a four percenter. I want to be a black belt and I want to be a four percenter at the same time. I think it's a good, it's a good, um, uh, a reasonable goal. And, what do you think and, the and biggest lesson is? Like, because I always say it's resilient with anything, you know. Like, if yeah, you, I mean, if long enough, like you'll get better. Yeah, and and, and you know, I started jujitsu at the same time. I started jujitsu in the summer, end of the summer, uh, beginning of September 2015, and we opened in December of 2015. And I think the the real takeaway is like you have to show up every day, no matter what, like whether you're injured, you're banged up, you know, if you're injured, some guy pops your knee or your ankle, your elbow, whatever, you still come to class, you still sit on the sidelines, you still watch, you still like watch videos at home, you still think about it, you still talk about it um, and stay connected to your people. Like you just have to show up every day. You are going to have bad days, you know, I have them all the time and they probably outweigh the good ones, but it doesn't matter. Like it's just grab yourself by the back of the shirt and just like pull yourself through the door. Um, I don't know how you felt about, uh, especially uh, judo training, like with the Olympic team, like it's gotta be hard and you're getting your ass yeah. thrown all over the place. And it's like, everyone's so good. And yeah. And there were probably days here. you dreaded it. Right. You were like, <laughs> I don't want to come in here. Cause this guy's just going to ragdoll me. And you know, I just, yeah. go ahead. What I would stay up like, uh, I would stay at the dorm rooms at the Kyokushikan, which is to go into the Kyoto Con or in the Kyokushikan, which is one of the, is the number one judo uh, college. Um, and it would basically be like, all right, like, let's get, <laughs> let's get beat up all day. Uh, wake up in the morning at six o'clock, you know, and like, you're, it, and like, you're sleeping in like this super like cruddy bed. That's like rock hard. It's, and more than anything, it's just like the mental fortitude that you build mm -hmm. doing that cycle day in and day out. Yep. And we'd be doing that you know, every, every summer. So it was, uh, when you come back to the States and it's like, okay, training is just from like, uh, whatever, like five to nine or five to 10 or whatever it is. Um, it's just 
that just feels a lot easier than, you know, ultimately. <laughs> well, that's, I mean, that's the idea for me behind like martial arts and, and jujitsu. And now I started MMA in, um, in September at Henzo's of all fucking places. So I'm just like really getting my ass beat. And um, it just makes everything easier. <laughs> like I come to work and like, no matter what's happening at the restaurant, you know, there's like pipe spewing water or whatever, you know, now we've got like slews of mandates and all this stuff. And I'm just like, still not as bad as what happened to me earlier today. Cause that was humiliating. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? Um, and humbling all those things really, everything really played in the world of martial arts. Yeah. No matter what. Yeah. Um, and, and the connection is always to the, to the mind, to the mental state, uh, just like the mission statement, um, on, on Neurogum's, uh, website. And, and like, like you said, you know, you, you have, you were talking about training, you know, you got to get up, you got to go in there, you know, you're just going to get mangled and it's like really rough, but like, that's, that's what gets you through. That's what I think there's some quote, you know, about, uh, you know, it's something about army generals and like the guy that makes it, you know, is not necessarily the guy that was the most uh, advanced. It's just the guy that survived. Like he didn't die. You know, he didn't die in war. He like, he made it. (laughs) He just like kept coming and he made it. And then he, he got that, he got to that position and he's got experience, you know, he's been to battle. He's been through all this stuff. And I feel like that's really what it comes down to is like, you're going to get knocked around, but like, you don't, here's the thing. If you quit, you don't get to win. (laughs) Yeah. The winners, the winners write history. Yes. (laughs) Yes. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. The victors, the victors. Yeah. All right. Great, great place to uh, take a little break. We're going to, we're going to soak all that in. And when we come back, I want to talk about Oki's world and cool. NFTs because ugh, it's, it's a lot. It's a lot. All right. So everybody hang tight. We'll be back in just a minute. All right, everybody. Welcome back. If you are just tuning in, you're listening to the entrepreneurial web. I'm your host, Jeremiah Fox. And today we have with us Kent Yoshimura. He is a co-founder of Neurogum and Oki's World, which is an NFT project. And as mentioned in the first segment, also uh, spent time training with the Japanese Olympic judo team and uh, doing some Muay Thai as well, hence the elbow at the beginning of that segment. Um, What I've found, before we go on to NFTs, because that's going to just blow my mind, I might not be able to talk anymore after we get into that. there, there's an interesting correlation between martial artists and entrepreneurs. Have you, have you found that as well? Um, yeah. Oh, a- absolutely. Uh, I think, well, going back to the whole idea of resilience and being yeah. able to flexibly maneuver through everything, right. That comes at you on a daily basis. It's creativity, martial arts, and business all seem to share that where there's a problem in front of you and you have to tackle it in some way to provide the best outcome, whatever it is, whether it's capital, whether it's the final creation or whether it's beating your opponent. And um, I don't know if that's just me and <laughs> trying to tie all things together in synchronicity, but uh, I, I feel like all the, all, all three of those things that have been profound uh, pieces in my background Uh, contribute to each other yeah so do you think it's entrepreneurs are attracted to jujitsu more or that jujitsu makes entrepreneurs more (laughs) yeah like the chicken and the egg yeah 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 (laughs) who knows it's a tough it's a tough one (laughs) that's a tough one that's a question for the yeah yeah we'll we'll take that and i i do have a question actually from twitter from my 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 good friend ginger beloved who is hot on the nft tip right now uh she's always been uh really really prominent on twitter and now she's really connected with uh v friends and and gary v's um nft project um and she asked she said you have to ask him about axel monsoor and how he chose him to be super oaky oh yeah so the reason so axel and i so i have been in the nft space for about a year which feels like a lifetime uh (laughs) basically it it is the life of nfts right right (laughs) Um, and crypto.com and clubhouse, uh, did a launch together and Axel and I, Axel was the face of clubhouse. So, and I was the artist, um, and alongside my partner, David, uh, Govay, who also lives in New York, uh, New York city, um, to help launch that NFT with crypto.com. So, um, yeah, I, I, I helped, uh, with the, with that partnership. <laughs> awesome. 
Yeah, cool. and Axel and I stayed friends because he's one of the coolest people I know. And it just made sense to, so the whole idea of Super Oki, before we get into Oki's world, is we designated 250 of the PFPs, which is a profile pick project, um, to give 100% of the primary and secondary to charity. And, for, and then 0.5% of everything we have also goes to charity. But uh, the learnings we took from that first NFT project is one, it's incredibly like it's, it's a hot market. So from a business perspective, it's incredible. But two was like, that was it. How do we turn it into something that like is more meaningful? How do we turn it into something that uh, provides value back to the people, like uh, actual sense of utility? And it, you know, I went through several other projects before hitting on Oki's world, but it all those learnings ended up to where we are now. Very cool. Um, so Oki's world is about, is it less than a year old? At Oki's this point? world is about two months old. Oh, okay. um, it's less than a week since our mint went up. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's pretty uh, brand new. Um, and, you know, it's, it's interesting because uh, we didn't hype it like all the other projects but we still have this like, in, like all these other projects are using like these really dirty like MLM style tactics to get people yeah. in because they know they could use that tactic um, because the market's so fresh. But uh, for us, it was like, how do we put art and utility and creativity first? And the ultimate goal with Oki's world, well, one, stage one is all about, okay, through five drops, how do we create a production which incorporates storytelling, animation, music, um uh murals um and this this membership into a creators network so that's stage one and we already started working on all the stage two utilities but taking from that this idea of creating a beautiful art piece and uh allowing the community members to tap into our creators network one but also this system that we're creating where it's a decentralized mechanism where you contributing to the community allows you to earn back is I think in many ways, the mantras of web three. So not user generated value to a corporation or whatever it is, but community generated community value where there's actual ownership and earnings that you could take from the things that you contribute to in the system, into the ecosystem. I, I read through the website extensively today and it, it, it looked to me like you guys were almost creating your own kind of internal blockchain that's also backed by the blockchain. Uh, we, I, everything we do is on chain. Um, and but I just mean in terms of like, like you, you just the key word you said, like decentralized, you know, where you guys, yeah. it, it, it had that feel to it. Um, and, and community, it's obvious that that's like paramount. Oh yeah. I think the whole idea text. with us is it's almost like, um, while it's not hundred percent this, it's like <clears throat> YouTube is user generated content that raises the value of YouTube, but, mm -hmm. uh, with Oki's world and the, the, the stage two we're building, which is a, already somewhat accessible because we keep like pushing forward with our roadmap, even though uh, we didn't hit our minting goals um, because it, people still like discover us and become part of this integrated network we were creating and they absolutely love it. So um, it's almost like decentralizing YouTube. It's mm -hmm. almost like decentralizing these creator networks where if you are a creator and you're actually contributing value into the community, then why shouldn't you have governance within that community? So, and, and same thing with like, so I just, right before this call, literally like um, what I, I was on a call with Art is Beautiful, which is a charity that was started and spearheaded by the music festival Life is Beautiful, which is the biggest music festival in Las Vegas. Their whole mantra is how do we provide universal basic income for artists? Because creativity is a means of enhancing society. And in that same mantra, like, and we're probably gonna like semi like, you know, we're, we're, we're partnering with them. Like we're gonna be the partner of, for them. But um, in that same mantra, it's like, how do we 
create economic value? How do you create uh, fulfillment <laughs> and um, like personal value through the form of creation? And if you are creating, how do you earn back from it? And it's, it's so it's, it's revenue generation beyond just like, hey, I created this NFT, you buy it, yada, yada. It, 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 it's, a, it's a bigger picture in terms of sustainability, yeah. quality of life. It's utility. Yeah, yeah, it's not just owning, a, you know, it's not just owning a, a, like literally a JPEG on the blockchain. Like that is right. what most NFTs are. <laughs> it's not just owning that and then hoping you can flip it like a trading card. Like there's right. really no hiding it. Like I, there's NFT products that are way more than that, but the majority of them are like, hey, look at this, this picture and you own it. Like th that part's important. Like you have ownership of it, but for most PFP projects where it's like, here's 10,000, like um, whatever, like baby sharks, you know, uh, that you get to have ownership of. <laughs> Like, what is the ownership behind that? <laughs> like, what is like, yeah, you own it, but what is the value behind that? You know? I'm glad you explained it that way. Cause it's, it's been hard for people to wrap their head around it. And it's like, why would I spend this kind of money on a pixelated monkey to use <laughs> as my Twitter profile pick, you know, but you're, yeah. you're taking it much further. Um, and, if you and connect and your wallet and you are an Oki holder, you have access to everything that our community uh, gives you access to which is that creators network that you could earn from the governance that we're going to create like into the future like there's a long-term goals the governance right. you know where like we're building we have like an entire map that we're building out that you could like start owning pieces of stuff. and it that to us is like step one of the metaverse not just owning a jpeg mm. the beauty of blockchain is the fact that you could authenticate your ownership into something so how do you build on top of that foundation like it's definitely you now what do you get knowing that it's you in this digital yeah. world that that's a great explanation and it could be applied to so many other things outside of art like art is the way it's really kind of popped off but it could be applied to real estate it could be it could applied to business investment i mean there's just so many different things that that it could be utilized for even uh marketing i've heard people talk about marketing that way I mean, thank you for that. I feel so much better. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, it's just like I, I can't, I'm constantly like trying to get these explanations, and you just really made that easy for me because I'm oh, like, good. well, you get into it sometimes. Like, dumb it down in my own head to understand it. <laughs> hey, no, thank you. I'm, I'm, I'm a savage, so I, I need that because <laughs> it's really. I, I, Andrew the other day, he was like, "Man, we've been talking about it for hours, and I still don't know what the fuck he's talking about." <laughs> it's it's like, hard. It's also like, I am surrounded by the smartest freaking people I've ever met in my life. And I'm just like, whoa, like, okay. I got that. <laughs> I'm looking around. I'm like, whoa, I mean, that's why I said I'm a little nervous today. <laughs> it's incredible. Like, I, I love like feeling like I'm the dumbest person in the room because yeah. every single thing everyone says is a learning experience. And it, this space has like, just my brain is in constant learning mode. Yeah. It's, it's so cool. So, well, you just got promoted because I'm now officially the dumbest person in the room. But <laughs> I am a yellow belt now, or I'm yeah, a white yeah, belt. Yeah, you are exactly, yeah. <laughs> exactly. But it's same, like same with you know martial arts. Like you want to go into a room where like everybody's better than you. It sucks at first, but that's how you get better. Where if you come in and you're new and it's like oh we're all kind of like same skill level, your growth could be studied. And uh, I like that feeling. I don't mind. Like I've been there enough. So I'm, I'm kind of used to it at that point. Back to, back to your point on like, it could be real estate. It could be, so the whole idea of like the future of DeFi, they call it like the DeFi matrix. Um, it's, it's, it's also something I learned recently. So hopefully uh, <laughs> I don't butcher it. But um, it's the, the, the concept for the DeFi matrix is that you don't need a, something in the middle to trade against assets. So for us, it's like, right. I have this scissor that I sell and I get US dollar and then I use the US dollar to buy something else. But if this and this have the same value, why can't you just swap between the two and trade between? Mm -hmm. And all of those things are anchored on Bitcoin. Right. So that's why Bitcoin or, or any stabilized thing, you know, like other, there's like Ohm, there's a few others that are trying to stabilize, uh, like be the anchor. But yeah, at, for the time being, it's like, all swaps exist within this matrix where everything can be traded against each other without currency. And 
that's really freaking cool. <laughs> like, it I, is. Yeah. It is. It's exciting. It's very exciting. I have no idea where it's going to go, but it's exciting. Yeah, I don't right. think it's <laughs> it cool. Right. Ride the bull, right? Just like owning a business. <laughs> no yeah. idea what the hell's going to happen. <laughs> All right, we're going to take another break. Everybody hang tight. We'll be right back. All right, folks, jumping right back in, talking today with Kent Yoshimura. He is co-founder of Neurogum and also Oki's World. I feel like we cracked just like the topsoil layer of NFTs, just the very top. <laughs> I don't want to go too deep because then I'm just going to look bad. But, um, you know, you, you just mentioned um, the connection to Bitcoin. Um, and then, you know, Ethereum is also a, a big player in this. Um, and on your website, you evaluate all your NFTs at 0.08 ETH. Is that right? Yeah, 0 0.08 ETH, which kind of is the standard. It, it was the standard um, okay. for like most of these PFP projects. So okay. with a lot of the decisions we made for Oki's World, um, it was like, okay, like let's try to make it as accessible as possible, not try mm -hmm. to change like the surface layer of how people are entering into it um, with like the pricing and anything else, but provide just way more um, in the back end for specifically what we're passionate about, which is just creators, creating, you know, building. Yeah. Right. Um, and that comes out to like roughly 300 and some change dollars. Is that right? Yeah, 300. So I, I'm sure you heard of gas fees before. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, that as well. So gas fees are what, our smart contract is incredible. <laughs> so like our gas fees aren't that egregious compared to these other projects we've seen, but it's so like refined and fine tuned. But um, mm -hmm. every time you upload, you know, like a leather, another line of code, um, it takes more processing power to put something onto the chain. So the network computers has to work way harder and that is the gas you're paying for. So, um, but for us, it's, it's really optimized. And um, even then, gas fluctuates between like $40 all the way up to like $150. Um, gotcha. It's crazy. And that just gets right. burned. That's just disappears. It's gone. <laughs> right. It's gone. So, Not it's a kind gone. of like gas. So, yeah. so, you know, what would be, and again, let's like take it back to like, I'm a caveman. I know absolutely nothing about this. What would be somebody's, um, incentive for purchasing like an Oki, what would, what would they do with that? So there's several things. One is uh, like with all PFP projects or like NFT projects, you get ownership of a piece of art. For our piece of art, what's cool that for pure, this is purely for the purists, but um, we built out assets in properties and we don't curate those assets before putting them directly onto the chain. We trust our generative art algorithm to go and put the Okies onto the chain so it's truly randomized. So one, I think that's super cool. Um, and you get to have ownership in that. Two, since your Oki that you minted is an authentication mechanism that you're part of our community, when you connect, our wa connect your wallet that has that long uh, hash um, into Oki's world, you get access to all the utility that we provide now and into the future. So that can that includes the asset packs, the creator network that we're, that we're building, um, all the smart contracts uh, to help you launch your own project and to really expand art into this NFT and Web3 space. So helping people who aren't necessarily able to get the devs or like other illustrators to help them out launch their projects and earn from it. Step three is as our roadmap expands into the future, you are part of the governance of what we are creating. It's Planet Maru is where Oki lives. You are part of the governance of uh, this new metaverse, I guess, that we're creating where you could start owning different plots of land, where you could start building on the plots of land, where you could start ha like having uh, certain voting rights based on your Oki um, to do things in this, in this world and to earn from that as well. And if you're not artistically inclined like myself, I could barely write my name, um, what's, what would be you know, an incentive for, for 
again, so, like a caveman <laughs> to, to invest. Yeah. So we, we give you like, if you own an Oki, you own 100% of the commercial license rights. So, and it's authenticated through the blockchain. So one of the big things we're doing is partnerships with these companies. You know, one of our advisors is the CMO of KiwiCo, which is a, like one of the coolest STEM like children's project, like companies out there. So building like an Oki's world, her, she just needs to mint an Oki for the 300 whatever dollars, 0 0.08 ETH. And now instead of paying for like thousands of dollars in licensing fees, she was able to take the assets in Oki's world to create an Oki's world branded Kiwi Code toy. Okay. Same thing with Bravery Brewing, who's making, it's a little co more complicated because I don't know how alcohol sales work and we have to look into that, but um, they have licensing <laughs> by minting an Oki to use it on like an entire series of beer. And mm -hmm. we don't have to worry about the licensing deals or anything um, because they are an Oki holder. Um, so it becomes, it becomes marketing at that point. That's one, that's, yeah, yeah, that's one element of marketing, but basically like breaking down the concepts of what IP previously was like mm -hmm. Disney will come after you and like, they will hunt you down. If you use Mickey, you know, if you're an Oki yeah. holder, you have commercial rights to it. You're like you can do whatever you want with an Oki um, that you own. So it's, it's, it's like a trademark. It's like you, you branded your own. It's, it's almost like a brand in a way yeah. you can attach that to whatever you want and that there is potentially value behind that for somebody yeah yeah and you know like of course people who aren't oki holders can go out and use their like use okis and do whatever they want with it but um and we're not going to like come after them but the authentic oh that's a good point <laughs> you can sue somebody that used your oki right yeah. but uh, you can you could have an oki simply to see if other people use it and sue them and make money that way. <laughs> that I guess if you're that's, that's enough, the new that's the New Yorker in me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't do that. I've just been sued enough times now that I'm like, yeah, you're, <laughs> if, you're, if you're somebody's gonna, gonna do you're that. Sued. I think that's yeah. just the, the way the the world works, and at least in America. But um, <laughs> it, in that regard, though, it's just like you know, it's it's having just it, you. It's true ownership. If you yeah. make Noki, it's true ownership you actually get to own it. It's an interesting space. I'm like still trying to wrap my head around the art component of it because I'm, again, me, it's funny. I went, you know, I went to school for music. I have a master's degree in music. I've been in yeah. food and beverage for a long time, all very creative things. The art, like the visual art scene just eludes me. I'm just like, hmm, that's a nice picture. <laughs> <You know>? So <laughs> and like, so when all this started to come out, I was just really like, Oh, fuck, I don't get this. I don't understand. And Gary Vee's like doodling, you know, giraffes on a whiteboard. And I'm like, well, how is this worth anything? I have <laughs> mixed feelings about a lot of what Gary Vee says, just in general. Yeah, of course. <laughs> and I don't think he really understands the space as much as he, but he is uh, loud enough to claim that he understands it. But right. And it doesn't matter because he's like, he's done something similar where he's created this community, but he is like the, the mover and shaker. Like yeah. he is the, the, you know, the godlike hand that, that makes everything happen. And I was, you know, I was really trying to understand why this would be valuable to somebody. And it was in a clubhouse room and this guy, he's also been on the show. Um, he, he has an NFT company in Florida and it's based off of, it's a tangible thing. It's like a, a card, but it, it's artistic, you know, it's like a baseball card, but it's, it's like these characters that they made mm -hmm. up. Um, and he was in this clubhouse room and I was asking like, why is this worth, shit you know like why do people care and he's like it's it's about his fans you know it's about like that's his like i keep connecting it all to blockchain just because i don't know any better <laughs> but um that's like that's like his blockchain it's just like all the millions of people that just like adore him he writes the thing up and they create the value for it because there's so many of them and they're and like it just takes one that's exactly what it is yeah, yeah. i mean that, that, <laughs> right. that, is, that is actually you know like that that is it it's just whether it's digital or not. <laughs> Man, I'm telling you, this is just the show's making me feel better and better about myself. <laughs> no, and I, I think you have a distinct understanding of it. Like it's just <sighs> whether it's you know in this other world. <laughs> yeah. Well, everything is another world these days, right? I mean, we're going like talking about talking about AI and shit like that. I mean, it's all just like 
was exploding. Yeah. Oh my god, that is like I, I can't even right. get started on. But that. it's just a crazy, it's a crazy real estate grab, and everybody needs like, a, like we're all like, holy shit, what's going on? I need like, do I have a piece? Do I have like something? Do I have? A yeah, guy? it's so cool. Um, like it I don't know, it freaks so, me out. It is very wild west, and I'm very grateful that smart people are that you know, like Vitalik, for example, the founder of Ethereum, and we were just actually talking earlier this morning with uh liam horn who is the biggest is he's like one of the biggest contributors to ethereum so like can be considered one of the co-founders of ethereum um but like these are really smart people that are focused on decentralization and not any one person owning like so much of the network like yeah. the is less than like half a percent of ethereum you know because he knows it needs to be mass adopted <laughs> and that to me is like awesome um, well, it just my understanding of finance in general. I mean, I'm not I'm, I'm definitely not proud of the way the U.S. has handled um, the dollar, you know, and, and I've been doing research on um, uh, what's the central bank here. Oh, my God. I'm a space cadet. This oh, you know They're in lower Manhattan right here. Yeah, the reserve, the Federal Reserve. Yeah, the Federal Reserve. So, you know, I, I've been I mean, reading about them and that their, the government their, borrows from. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> So this idea of like decentralized money um, is appealing to me because of my disdain for their their you know what I consider mishandling of finances in this and country. Like, and, you know, how, like one person, you know. <laughs> like, yeah, exactly. I'm like, oh, let's just make more. Yeah. So, I you know, I was talking to my 14 year old daughter who is like, you know, anybody that's on the internet these days is like somewhat aware of NFTs and and um, you know Bitcoin and. And such, and and I was talking about buying Bitcoin and buying ETH and and you know investing in NFTs, and she's like, "Why?" And I, I was like, the first thing that came to my mind I was like, "Well, I could just you know contribute to you know destabilizing a foreign government just from my phone. Like that's just really cool." And she's like, "What the fuck are you talking about?" And I was like, "Well, it's also an investment." And she was like, "Well, you could have just said that." And I was like, "Yeah, but the other first one's cooler, man. It's just like I'm just sitting on my phone, like, oh, you guys need money? Cool, you need funds? Boop, there you go. You got a wallet? Yeah. All right, Guatemala." now you're going to be fucked up like it sounds fun yeah yeah, yeah. It it, cool. it, it's like your 15 or 16 year old daughter or something right it's just like all what right when I'm 15, or 16, I was just playing video games and <laughs> yeah like i said i don't understand the art application so what else, how else can i use this ah okay <laughs> now we can have some fun yeah that's that's where it's at all right we got one more break hang tight everybody we'll be back in just a minute all right let's wrap this baby up again we are talking deep stuff, NFTs, metaverses, all kinds of crazy things that usually make my brain hurt, but I actually feel a little bit better today. Um, really a, a pleasure having you on the show, man, and, and getting to hash this out. Um, one other question I wanted to ask you, because it, it, it was on, um, I, I think I saw it on both the websites for um, NeuroGum and Oki's World, is uh, your commitment to innovation. What, how... Why is it so important to you? Um, I think it's just the artist in me and to constantly be providing new. Uh, it's it's weird because like, <laughs> I don't think I am. It's an innovation in like my eyes, I guess it's just putting two disparate things together. And that's what art is, right? Being able to view something and then putting a disparate thing alongside what exists in the current system and then pushing that out there. And if it gets adopted, then great. If it doesn't, then, you know, you keep innovating on that if you are a firm believer in it. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I think more than anything, it's just exciting. <laughs> it, it makes life more exciting. Yeah. And, and you, you know, pointed out, enough, I mean, you, I failed to mention, sorry, that you're also an internationally renowned muralist as well. So like, creation and art is a big part of everything you do. And I feel the same, you know, for me, it's, I was always driven by, you know, music was a huge part of my life for a long time. Um, and, and then it, it transferred into, you know, uh, food and, and beverage, and then it just transferred into business. And for me, like entrepreneurship and business is creative. It's, it's a continuation of it all. You know, it's like writing, it's just like writing a symphony and then you rope in martial arts and all you like, holy shit, it's really amazing. Um, but, but as, as creative people, like one thing I find is like creative people kind of can suck at business and suck even more at marketing. Like you might be able to create the thing for marketing, but then like, do you get it to people? And I think artists and, and creative people suffer from that a lot. What is something that's helped you 
kind of keep your keep your focus and 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 make that happen man i mean i'm a terrible marketer <laughs> like i don't consider myself a marketing person by any means <laughs> but, uh, i do really like creating and making sure things are accessible to the public i think if anything like that is like a mantra and everything uh mm. that i do so with the art like i used to be in the fine art world like my i think you can see like some of my these yeah. are like old paintings um that i've made and then like all my newer paintings have just evolved into more whimsical things that i could paint on walls so that the public can appreciate it instead of within like the four walls of a gallery where only certain people can access it mm -hmm. and um that's why i love murals so much the reason i love oki's world is like it's a very it's a much more approachable owned format of the former production model where it's not a studio room of like four white, you know, old white dudes deciding whether something gets greenlit or not. It is a community deciding whether these projects get to be pumped out. Um, and then with Neuro, it's not taking, you know, a bottle of pills. It's having something that's shareable in gum and mint form, which is already shareable. Mm -hmm. And I think to make things approachable is intrinsically marketable in that regard. So, and the community helps you uh, market it more. <laughs> and right. It. Fill in my problems. <laughs> That's what it is. Fill in yeah. the voids. Yeah, right. Like the, the you know, the more um, refined and, and specific it gets, the more friction you have, which means you have to be better at marketing. <laughs> right. <laughs> and if that's not your forte, then you need to dial that shit down and make it. But I think I really love the the analogy of the murals. So like you were doing, you know, whatever oil on canvas or whatever it was. And like you said, it was going to be confined to like four walls, you know, and, and not everybody will have access to it. But when you when you put it out to the public, you have this, it seems to me like this, this uh, real drive to connect with people. And that becomes... Your marketing because uh that at the end of the day who is making the decisions right <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I i love people i love hanging out with people <laughs> so me and, like me too. To that stuff. you know me why too. open a and restaurant Andrew, right <laughs> the hardest industry to do. It's, to be yeah around. i would recommend against it but uh we, we can talk <laughs> um yeah. and sh and shout out to andrew also because andrew loves people and he's brought so many people like yourself oh, yeah. through the doors here and he's always like every time he's always like oh you should interview this guy this guy's a badass and i'm like oh cool <laughs> like this is awesome yeah, like he he, he's great this is the first one that's panned out where like one of his friends came through and, and actually like hopped on the show but uh but that you know it, it comes up so much like we create i like for me i started playing music because it made me feel good you know it was like therapy um you know it just it, it gave me energy and then once i learned how to share that and the same with food like particularly like i i'm in the food industry because i love to share that with other people like i'm very fond of good food and quality ingredients like all the things that are on the neurogun website i'm like yes that's what it's about and to be able to share that especially for people that maybe are less aware of that or, or have less access you know yeah. to it i, I think mean, that's really important to your point it's like one, the food at your restaurant was incredible. So oh, thank you. I, Checks I, in the mail. Thank you. <laughs> but two, it's like, yeah, it's funny because like when I was younger, art to me was an ego thing. Like looking back at it, like, right. And you play music and you're trying to show off or whatever it is. Um, like art to me was always an ego thing. And then at some point it became like not an ego thing. <laughs> like there, there's like this weird inflection point where it's like, oh, like it needs to be shared. Like, food is like, I can make this amazing thing to impress a girl or whatever it is, but it's like, oh, but why not share it to enjoy the company and like the joy that comes out of the food. And I think we all go, not all of us, <laughs> some of us never go through that path. Unfortunately, but, uh, yeah. Like going through that path with business and art and music and uh, NFTs, you know, like has been really beautiful. And um, I, I don't know. And you, and you can still impress the girl that way. Like you could still, you know, like that's the beauty of it is like you did it without, without that direct, you know, it's like jujitsu. When you want to get a guy or judo, you know, you want to get, 
you know, you want to get a, a Koichigari, you don't go straight for the Koichigari. You gotta set it up. You got to do some other shit. Fuck with this other foot. And then make coach, a, yeah. You know, yeah. Like maybe same idea. You want to get the girl, you don't just walk and be like, hey, I want me, man. I want you, you know? Right, right. right. We, we've make evolved that food. <laughs> yeah. Make some food and be like, I made this for all of you. I just love people. And then I, the girl's going to be like, hey, you know, that's how, I, at least that's how I got married. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. She don't cook, so that's that's I, this is where man, I I try. I'm just I try to cook. <laughs> Let's just leave it at that. Well, like like I said, I try to write my name and it doesn't come out so well. <laughs> the, the visual art thing just escapes yeah. me. But um, well, this whole thing has got me really excited. Like I I want to I want to own an Oki. So I, like sometime soon. I'm going, we're, you're going to walk me through this. You're going to be like my NFT consultant in a way. Cause I, I, I'm so interested in it. And I feel, especially after this show, I feel like I have a little bit more of an understanding of it, but um, I need guidance. And I, you know, I just feel like I'll fuck it it's up. if I. so if I to complicated right now. It's crazy. Yeah. They make it so complicated. And there's so like OpenSea, it, they do they need to figure stuff. So Baron, yeah. Baron Davis, uh, who's a friend of ours, um, is a big supporter of Oki's world. Um, minted a bunch of uh, scam Oki's on OpenSea, not knowing that it was not the legitimate website. Um, mm -hmm. So I'm going to go see him later today and help him sort it out. But yeah, like, throw his ass around a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> it's like so unfortunate because, like, one, like that's a person that wants to support the vision of the project, but two, the the space is so ripe for the taking. Because there's mm -hmm. so many newbies coming into it that it's it's inevitable, but it yeah. will eventually be. Uh, the thing is with OpenSea, they're still a Web two platform, right? That uses Web three, and if authentication can <laughs> truly be managed, then these issues won't happen. So, right. <laughs> yeah. So we have to innovate, right, and just keep okay. uh, and just yeah. keep being the best versions of ourselves, exactly. man. Well, thank you so much. It's been really cool. I want you, before we go, to let people know where they can find out more information on Oki's World, NeuroGum, and if they have any questions for you, if anybody listening is like, I too want an Oki, where, where should they go? How should they approach this? So for, for NeuroGum, you can find us in Whole Foods Nationwide. I think we're at the cash wrap right now. Um, but uh, And CVS, we're in 7,500 stores. Um, so at, at your local store, or you can find us online at getneuro.com, N-E-U-R-O. Um, with Oki's World, if you go to okis.world, you could mint your Oki there on the button on the, on the header banner and join our community. Um, it has links to our Discord. You can see how active it is. You can see how amazing uh, everyone in there is. Right. We didn't even talk about Discord. I, can't, like, I don't have the bandwidth yeah, yeah. for it. I'm like wait if i get an oki do i have to be on discord do i like, have to be on discord if i get an oki yeah yeah you can be on our discord even without an oki like it's just i'm just saying do i have to be on discord if i get an oki yeah i think so i think so i think you need to add your notification count by like tenfold if not uh, about tenfold. <laughs> all right we're gonna work this out we're gonna work yeah, this we'll out. work it out we'll work it out um and then you can uh, uh find us on on twitter at at oki's world um, or you can find me at Ken Kentarotic or at Kentaro on Instagram to see some of my art. And you guys are killing it on Twitter already. You, it just like you guys are pretty new to it and and got a I'm sizable following awesome. already. <laughs> like I've never been part of a such like a good group of people that I don't know. You know. Yeah. Like right. That. But that's how I feel about Twitter too. I've connected with so many people that way, and it was all through the show. The only my only Twitter account currently is my radio personality. And uh, I just, I was like, this is a good place to promote this. And it's been so cool. And that's exactly how I learned about NFTs. And first someone shared something about Oki's world recently. So I was like, when Andrew said it to me, I was like, no shit, I just saw that. So <laughs> yeah, we, we're scattered around random places. And like, as a, as a final thought, it's like, there's only, I, I think it's something like 10 million wallets, like crypto wallets now in the entire world. Think of how small that number is. Yeah, there's people using Coinbase and all these other places to hold their crypto and buy it, but people actually doing transactions with crypto is like 10 million or around that range. Worldwide. We're just at the cusp of it all. It's going to yeah. be- It's going to explode. And it's going to be amazing. And yeah, I'm, I'm, and Ethereum's less than $4,000 right now. So 
during the break, I just bought a bunch of Ethereum. But nice. <laughs> All right. More Ethereum. So you gotta help. You gotta help me. We're gonna talk. Gonna okay. Talk. Okay. Yeah. 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 Me I'm up. gonna make one good decision in my life, and it's not gonna be another fucking restaurant. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, I love it. It's just it's such it's so much work. So I, I'm looking for something that restaurant in the metaverse. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Yeah. We'll make one in Oki's world. We'll make a little restaurant. Oh my god. Awesome. That shit. Oh, okay. Now I get it. All that right. Be, yeah. <laughs> that's what. It is. Yeah. That would be awesome. An Oki restaurant. Uh, okay. It's done. Let's do it. I'm gonna get walk. I'm gonna walk a little. Yes. No. I'm gonna walk a little more proud today after this. <laughs> Join Thank our Disco. Check out the channels. So we have a bunch of channels, right, in our server. Yeah. Uh, we have a recipe section on how to oh, cool. make food out of things you find in our planet Maru. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Perfect resident of that space let's do it let's do it sounds great <laughs> awesome man thank you so much what a cool conversation all of you thank you i hope you got uh some value out of this there's some some great stuff in here and there'll be some uh some posts uh prod on my social media platforms everybody can check it out then too so thanks again kent man yes. next time you're in new york definitely hit me up and i'll talk to you soon we'll we'll hop on a call and, and make this all happen the rest <laughs> of you have a great weekend we will see you next week peace out